My name is Brooke Lark and I shoot flat lays for big named companies and I am here to help you harness the essentials so that you can create the kind of flat lays guaranteed to grow your online empire. It's now time to hunt for props and put it all together to shoot. Hunting for props to me is the best part of the flat lay. Whenever I'm conjuring ideas for flat lays, I like to start with a theme. That theme can be an idea like travel or business or food, or it can be a color or a shape or a pattern. Once you pick your theme, start thinking about props that would actually relate. For instance, if I'm going to shoot a flat lay about food photography, I'm going to want props that relate to food and photography. And I use the word relate here because you really want to choose props that make sense together. Props that tell a story together. I'm also going to pay special attention here to size, shape, and color. So try looking for items that are about the same size, the same height, or the same hue. Collecting like items will help you create a harmonious photo. To find props, hunt around your house or hit a craft or party store Visit an antique shop, or a candy store, or a record store, or a bookstore. Visit your grandmother's house. Head out into nature, pick flowers in your backyard, go to the grocery store, the office supply store, the dollar store. Props are literally everywhere. Once you've picked your theme, look for items that relate, and then just start gathering them together. Now before arranging props on a backdrop, I like to gather them together and just see how they all look. Is there any prop that's too tall or too small or too bright or too clunky? Pulling your collection together before you arrange your shot can help you make sure that you've got a really happy mix of items there ready for arranging. Flat lay, it's a skill. It doesn't necessarily come naturally and there are actually some tips and tricks that can help you shortcut the learning curve. Obviously, having the right tools and the right setup is step one. But even more important is understanding how to just compose a beautiful shot. And by compose, I really mean organize. Flat lay photography is all about organizing. We're organizing ideas and colors and shapes and textures and items. And when you understand this, you're really already leaps and bounds ahead of where I was when I shot that first super terrifying looking flat lay. So you've got your essentials, you've gathered your props. As you can see here, I've gathered a bunch of props for a party themed flat lay. So it's time to flat lay, let's get this party started. We are gonna start with a white backdrop because a white backdrop matches everything. It makes it really easy to focus on our composition and layout. It's a great place to start, but we're also going to put these exact same props on the pink backdrop because I just wanna show you the difference that the backdrop and the color can make. All right, grab your white backdrop, lay it next to a nice diffused window, make sure that you've got all of that glowy light, and then it's time to just start arranging your props on top of the backdrop. Remember, flat lay or knolling started as a practice in organizing items at right angles, so let's just start there. It's a little bit like a game of Tetris. What we're gonna do is just set our props on the backdrop and then start to find ways to organize them so that they fit together really nicely. I like to throw all of my biggest items right into the center. And then I'll just start playing around. You'll notice as you place your items onto your backdrop, that these little spaces will start to open up and I will start to try to fit different objects into those spaces. So for instance, between the circle here and this line here, we have this little space that's opened up. I want to find something that fits into that and then starts to create some nice lines. Now here's a note. If you are creating a flat lay and you want to crop it to a square for say Instagram or I don't know, an ad, then you wanna make sure that you actually compose your picture into a square. So sometimes I will draw a line to make sure that I'm composing in a square. Other times I'll actually look through my camera phone or my camera, make sure that the items are going to sit nicely in a square. If you don't want a square, you can organize it in any way that you want. I love using little things like candles, 
to create some lines around the lines that I already have. I'll do this a lot with flower petals or leaves as well. As I put together a flat lay, I'm always looking for a nice mix of large and small objects. So for instance, in this flat lay, I've decided that the cake is gonna be the centerpiece. And I always like to work in diagonals. So if I put a color up here in the right corner, then I'm also going to put it just opposite in the lower left quadrant. And a lot of this is just feeling. You put something on, you try it, you see how it feels. So with the party flat lay, on top of all of the right angles, I always like to add organic shapes as well. So leaves or like eucalyptus. I love throwing eucalyptus because it just kind of livens up your picture. And I look for small items that can help me kind of pull out a little bit of a kiss here and there. I always think of these things as like a little wink. And then put some movement into your picture. It's always nice to start with the right angles, but don't hesitate to add a little bit of playfulness to your pictures as well. I definitely believe in adding a little bit of lifelike feel, especially when I'm working with food for a flat lay. So taking a little bite and then putting that eaten food right on your, your scene can just make for a really fun little added visual intrigue. Plus, delicious. As you work, you might find that your props roll around. Don't hesitate to grab some little sticky glue dots or even some museum wax to keep your stuff in place. I'll even use a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. As you're composing, think about, you know, if you want a human element, then leave space for it. And here's a really quick trick. If you are going to have somebody put their hand on your flat lay, they have to keep their hand flat. So I will often call my children in, okay, you guys, I need your help. And they know that they need to come and bend all the way down and keep their hand flat against the flat lay so that the hand isn't too close and looking gigantic through my camera. Once I get the props in place, I'm going to grab my camera and see how it all looks inside the frame. It's not uncommon to think that you've arranged this beautiful shot, only to step back and look at it through your lens and find things that you just need to tweak. This is actually part of the process, so don't panic. Arrange, but then look at it through the camera. I'm going to look at it through my smartphone and I'm gonna kind of hover over where I might wanna take the picture. And then I'm gonna say, you know, I just feel like this is a lot of sprinkles right here in this corner. And so maybe I'm gonna clear out this space a little bit, create a little more negative space, and move the party hat right next to here because that party hat here just really makes me feel like this party is happening. Okay, here we have it through a square and you can see that it's really quite a different scene. I can now pull a lot farther away from my picture and work in a lot more. And so now there's some tweaking that I have to do down here that I didn't have to do previously in the rectangle. So you can see the way that you compose it is completely related to the way that you're gonna crop your picture. With our final tweaks in place, it's time to shoot. With a smartphone, you're basically set. You can just hover right over the image and click. Hand holding a DSLR, make sure that your shutter speed is set to at least 100 and then your f-stop is set to at least a 5.0. This will keep most of your image in focus so that you can get a crystal clear shot. And then just start to tinker with the ISO until the brightness is exactly right. With a DSLR on a tripod, you still wanna make sure that your f-stop is at least a 5.0, but you can dial that shutter speed down a bit if you need a little more light, and you can still get a crisp shot because that tripod is gonna hold it steady. Here is what a typical flat lay session looks like. 
I like to take a few photos and then I'll rearrange the items a bit and just start playing with the props. Once you've got everything set up, it's worth spending a few extra minutes playing because that is how you learn what works and what doesn't. And it's really where you start to find your own personal style emerge. Reminder, this is art. You are creating something new. There's no exact right way to do it, so there can be no mistakes. Let go of your inner perfectionist and just have fun. Organize and reorganize and arrange and rearrange. You are going to learn as you snap, so just keep playing and snapping.